happy morning everyone welcome to meteor youtube channel i hope you are all fine and preparing well for your upcoming nursing competitive exams after a long time i'm posting a video okay today we are going to see a important topic neonatal care and clinical scenario based questions because nowadays all the exams are question is based on the clinical scenario and clinical settings questions only so today we are going to see about that only okay so before starting the session we'll start with a small quote life is tough but you are tougher life is not easy for everybody yes definitely life is a tough but think you are tougher than that okay ellarkume kashta irukka da seiya life la kashta illada life kedaiyadu but adiyum taandi and the life and the kashtathai taandi enala sadhikka mudiyengra neenga think pannina mattum da you can achieve okay today we'll start a neonatal care clinical nursing questions and answers okay first question which of the following would the nurse expect to assess in a neonat delivered at 28 weeks gestation who is diagnosed with intraventricular hemorrhage ivh okay 28 weeks that means pre term okay so the answers they have given increased muscle tone hyperbilirubinemia bulging fontanelles hyperactivity so what is the correct option the correct option is bulging fontanelles when the child is born with a intraventricular hemorrhage we have ventricles in the brain right so whenever there is a bleeding or any kind of a hemorrhage happening in that ventricle there will be a pooling of blood that can be seen in the fontanelles we have the fontanelles in the child right so you can see this is here so this is the fontanel where we can see the pooling of blood when there is an intraventricular hemorrhage it's a bulging fontanel we can call it okay so other options like increased muscle tone increased muscle tone and hyperactivity is not a typical sign of a intraventricular hemorrhage uh, what about hyperbilirubinemia so it's a jaundice right which is not directly related to ivh but end of the ivh when the ivh is not treated we can see the uh, jaundice level because rbc will be distracted we can see the jaundice but it is not directly not only directly connected to the ivh okay so the correct option is bulging fontanelles second question which of the following would alert the nurse to suspect that a neonat delivered at 34 weeks gestation who is currently in an isolate with humidified oxygen and receiving intravenous fluids has developed over hydration simply i am telling the question or 34 weeks kolanda vandu parandirukke currently in isolate isolate means nothing but it is a what is that incubator okay isolate other name is incubator other name is isolate isolate okay with humidified oxygen you are giving the fluids ninga and kolanda ki iv fluids kudukringa so following symptoms kuduthirukanga idla which symptom is related to the overhydration you are given more fluid to the neonat so the options hypernatremia polycythemia hypoproteinemia increased urine specific gravity so what is the correct option very easy questions yes it is hypoproteinemia why hypoproteinemia definitely if you are giving the more fluid definitely there won't be hypernatremia dilution will be there so hyponatremia we can expect similarly polycythemia will not be there if you too much of water you are giving the rbc level will be diluted so polycythemia never will be there so increased urine specific gravity it is seen in the dehydration not in the overhydration clear so hypoproteinemia as a symptom we can see it in the overhydration because it's indicating patients having the ductus arteriosus congestive heart failure right so these are the symptoms due to the decreased protein okay sign of overhydration clear so this is isolate nothing but it is an incubator other name for the incubator is isolate not isolate it's isolate next a septic preterm neonates iv was removed due to infiltration while restarting the iv the nurse should carefully assess the neonate for what or a sepsis neonate irk preterm child irukanga avangalukku vande iv poitt irukum bodu iv infiltration aayiruchu so thirupi neenga restart panna poringa iv so adukku munadi edha neenga vande assess panniveenga 
So the options are given fever, hyperkalemia, hypoglycemia, tachycardia. And the correct option is hypoglycemia. Option 3, hypoglycemia. So when the child is on the sepsis, what will happen? The body will consume more glucose. Okay, when the child is in the sepsis, not only child, adult also, the body will utilize more glucose from the body. So suddenly any infiltration is happening, what we will do? We will stop the IV fluid, we will restart it. So during that time, the child may undergo hypoglycemia because the preterm child as well as sepsis, they need a continuous glucose infusion, right? So the correct answer is hypoglycemia. Fever, we can see it in the thrombophlebitis. In thrombophlebitis, we can expect fever. Hyperkalemia will not be there. And uh, tachycardia is seen in the hypoglycemia, the symptom of a hypoglycemia. Clear? Yes. The next question. After circumcision with a plasti bell, the nurse should instruct the neonate's mother to cleanse the circumcision site with which of the following? So the answer already given, it is in warm water, not an antibacterial soap, not a povidone iodine, not a diluted hydrogen peroxide. What is this plasti bell? It is a kind of a ring which is used in the circumcision. After a penis is getting a cut, they will place this plasti bell uh, in the uh, end of the penis. So that will be there for a more 7 to 10 days. Okay. So automatically it will fall off. Okay. It is will be cleaned only with the warm water, not antibacterial soap because it can lead to the any kind of an infections. Povid and iodine will irritate the penis. We should not use that. Diluted hydrogen peroxide also will give the stingy uh, sensation to the child. Clear? So this is plastible circumcision. So next question. A neonate has a large amount of secretions. After vigorously suctioning the neonate, the nurse should assess for what possible result. The question is, or kolandik nareesh or neonate kondu nareya secretion sirk vigorasa ninga suction pandranaala enna possible result varum this may be a side effect okay bradycardia rapid eye movement seizure tachycardia so answer is bradycardia when you nama vandu romba vigorasa suction pannum bodhu enna agum vagus nerve stimulation irukum not only for the neonate if it is for the adult also, for if you are doing a ET suctioning, tracheostomy suctioning, any suctioning, vagal nerve simulation will be there. So, vigorasa nama ondur child ko or adult ko nama continuous suction pannam bodhe, vagus nerve stimulation leads to the bradycardia. Clear? So, the correct answer is bradycardia. Not rapid eye movement, seizure, tachycardia is not related to the suctioning. Clear? So, that's all about today's session. Thank you so much. I hope it will end the if you have any doubts, please type it in the comment section. Thank you all. We'll meet you in the next session.